All right, now today, I'm finna show y'all how I make Mongolian beef. This is what you're gonna need. Shaoxing wine, whatever cut of beef you would like to use. I'm using flank steak, MSG. You could choose to not use it if you don't want to. Soy sauce, y'all know I usually like to use the low sodium, but today I'm gonna use the regular because I'm not gonna be adding in any additional salt, white pepper, an onion, green onion, ginger, baking soda, and you're gonna need a little bit of sugar. You see that? You see that? You see that? Don't ask me for the damn ingredient list. Now, come on. First things first, you're gonna wanna make sure that you slice your meat down nice and thin. You wanna slice it against the grain. So if the grain is going down vertically like this, you wanna make sure that you're slicing it the opposite way. That is how you make sure that the meat is going to be nice and tender. You also want it to be nice and thin. First things first, always sharpen up your knife. And I'm gonna go again across the grain like so. And I'm gonna do this to all of my beef. And I'm gonna make sure they're even slices, but that's about how thin I want it to be. Now to help velvet the meat, I'm going to go in with one tablespoon of cornstarch. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but you're gonna need one tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm also going to go in with half a tablespoon of baking soda, a little less than half a tablespoon. That's about how much I'm using. Add that in. I'm gonna go in with a few squirts of a neutral oil. This is avocado oil, just a little bit. And I decided that I did wanna add in just a little pinch of sugar, but not, I mean, not a pinch of sugar, a little pinch of salt, but not too much. Put that in like so. And then I'm also going to add in a splash of the soy sauce in this as well, because I wanna make sure that I'm already starting to impart a lot of flavor into this Mongolian beef. If you guys have never had Mongolian beef, it is probably one of my favorite things to get. And I'm gonna measure this out because in this, I only wanna put a half a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon, soy sauce, just like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Shaoxing wine. You guys know I always say, if you want it to taste like carry out, you gotta have the Shaoxing wine. Don't worry, we're gonna add in more later on but I'm gonna put in a half a tablespoon right there as well. And now give this a mix and we're gonna sit this to the side and let this rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. And also don't forget, you're gonna add in one fourth of a teaspoon of white pepper. If you don't like yours as peppery, you can minimize that. But for this amount of steak, which is probably a little over a pound or so, one fourth for me is just enough. Place the lid on this and set it to the side. And for the veggies, like I said, I'm gonna be adding in green onion as well as regular onion. I'm going to remove the very tips of these. We're gonna discard that. Then we're gonna chop off the whites. The whites are what we're gonna be sauteing down with the beef to begin with. And then we're just gonna chop down the greens to add in a little bit later on. And I chop that down in the fourths. You can add in as much or as little as you would like. The same thing applies to the onion. I have a large sweet Vidalia onion here. I'm just gonna do this in, you know, I'm probably gonna use about half of this because um, I don't really need it to be too, too oniony. And I wanted to take this moment really quick to answer some questions that you guys have had for me in regards to cooking and my knowledge around cooking. So oftentimes I'm asked, well, T.Y., how do you know so much about cooking? How do you know so much about different cuisines? For those of you that don't know, when I was in high school, I studied culinary arts pretty much from middle school up until the day I graduated. Before I graduated high school, starting my sophomore year, I started taking vocational school for culinary arts. So before I had even graduated high school, I had already had my certification in food production and sanitary arts. I then later on went to college for cooking, but then realized that I knew that I was never going to be the chef that was gonna be working in an industrial kitchen because I like to cook my own way. So then I kind of stopped. And then over the years, I've just been kind of self-training myself. You know, with social media, it's also really easy to learn how to cook other people's you know, other cultures dishes by studying, watching what they do. I test out a lot of things before I bring them to you all, figure out how I like it, make the adjustments to my liking, and then I share them with you all. So, like I said, we have the whites from the green onion, our sliced sweet Vidalia onion, the greens, and now I'm uh, slicing down a nice sized chunk of ginger. Um, I'm probably only going to use probably about this much here, and I'm gonna slice that down. Let's go. 
And just FYI, I'm super aware that ginger is not typically in this meal, but I love the addition of ginger. But because ginger is so potent and I'm using it fresh, I'm only going to use about that much. Mince this down really small. And because this dish is so easy to put together, I like to have everything already ready to go. So let me give you the rundown of what we have going on here. This is the greens from the green onion. We have half of a sweet Vidalia onion thinly sliced. The whites from the green onion. I decided that I was going to use a little bit of garlic paste. I'm probably going to use less than a half a tablespoon. I have about a half a tablespoon of minced ginger. I have two tablespoons of my Shaoxing wine, one fourth of a cup of regular soy sauce, and two tablespoons of sugar. That might sound like a lot, but trust me, it's not when it balances out with the soy sauce. So have all of that stuff ready to go because once we put the meat in the pan, this is all going to come together very quickly. And if you were wondering about the MSG, I'll be adding in one teaspoon. I've added in roughly about a cup or so of some neutral oil. Today, I'm going to be working with avocado oil. And now that I know that this is at temp, I'm going to go on ahead and start to add in my beef. You want to fry this off. I would say take it out roughly in about two to three minutes. You do not want to overcook this. Give it a shift around so that you can make sure that it's all cooking up evenly. I would say once it's about 80% done, that's when you want to go on ahead and take it out. You do not want to try to fully cook this because it will overcook because you're going to be adding it back into the pot in just a few moments. So cook it about 80% through. All right, this beef is looking just the way I want it. So now I'm going to go on ahead and remove this out of the oil. And I'm going to sit this into a bowl to the side until I am ready to add it back into the pot. You want to remove pretty much all of this oil except for maybe I would say about three tablespoons worth. But this is seasoned oil, so you don't want to get rid of all of it because that's what we're going to use to start to saute down some of our veggies. So now we can go on ahead and add in our onions, the whites from the green onion, as well as the ginger, and allow that to cook. I've let these cook for maybe about, you know, one to two minutes. I want it to have a little bit of bite to it, so I don't want it to cook for too long. Now I'm going to go on ahead and add in probably about a teaspoon or so of this garlic paste. If you have fresh garlic, by all means, use it. I would say use about four to five cloves all together. Continue to cook. You can now go ahead and add that delicious beef back to the pan, as well as the green from the green onion, and go on ahead and give all of that a mix as well. I'm now going to go in with the teaspoon of the MSG, the two tablespoons of the sugar. I'm going to also go in and add in the soy sauce, working your way from the outside to the inside, as well as the Shaoxing wine. From the outside, let it work its way to the inside. Over high heat, give all of this a good mix. As this continues to cook over the next minute or so, it's gonna naturally thicken up because we added in that cornstarch. And that right there, my friends, is how I make my Mongolian beef. It's just that simple. Few key ingredients. My God, it's just, it is just one of my favorites. Let's go on for a taste test, shall we? All right, let's go on for a taste test, shall we, child? And let me tell you something. I can already tell you right now that this meat is going to be super soft and succulent because of velveting the meat. That is a key step that you should not skip. Here we go. Mmm. -hmm. The way the meat just, the, the way the meat, it, it just melts. Cutting it against the grain, velveting the meat. It's the perfect balance of sweet and salty. Mm. I'm trying to tell y'all, stick with your boy, okay? Because... We doing some good things around here. Mm, mm, mm.